The tragedy of Karen and Yamato is not the fact that it's possible that neither of them joined the Straw Hats. Instead, it's two of the most popular characters in the entire story having completely dead character arcs. On one hand, you have an interesting mink that's built up to be a potential Straw Hat in Whole Cake Island, only to get completely ignored for over 150 chapters. And on the other hand, you have a character who was dead set on joining the Straw Hats, only to decide off screen she's changing her mind because her goal to remain as a one-dimensional character was stronger. This is the tragedy of Carrot and Yamato and we're going to be breaking down their individual character arcs and why I think it went wrong. But before we get to that, if you enjoy videos like this, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. With that said though, let's get into the breakdown and let's start off with Carrot because let's be honest, she needs some screen time. And first off, before we even break anything down, I want to acknowledge that it's entirely possible that she joins the crew next chapter. At this point, I honestly don't know what to expect with the story, so I'm not going to try to. And as far as Carrot goes, it does feel very weird that she was completely ignored in the last chapter when the Straw Hats left. And don't worry, we will discuss that as a possibility later. But with her getting ignored last chapter, it seems very possible that she hid away on the ship and she's gonna join them, something she did before after Zoe. And honestly, narratively for her character, I think it makes more sense for her to join the crew. So as far as becoming a Straw Hat, Kara can still absolutely join and I would personally like it. Honestly, on this channel, there's been a bit of a misconception that I don't like Kara and I don't want her to join. But if you just go back to my oldest videos, to the third video I ever made on this channel. It was a Carrot video, and in that video, I said, I want Carrot to join. I want Carrot as a crew member. I think it makes sense. However, as time passed on in the story, I did end up changing my mind because, I don't know, maybe because she was completely ignored in the story. And here lies the first problem with Carrot's story, where even if she does end up joining, I think Oda made a very weird choice to just completely ignore her in the entirety of Wano. And I think as a result of that, Carrot would end up as the least developed straw hat that has ever joined. Now don't get me wrong, it's not like she got no development in the story. That award goes to the next person that we're gonna talk about. Because in the story, she has been present for three straight arcs now from Zoe to Wano. And in Whole Cake Island, when you look back at it, she did get a decent amount of development. First off, she was able to spend a good amount of time with half the crew and got a lot of interactions. This was especially true with Nami, Chopper, and Brooke, who she spent the most of her time with. Chopper in particular, she seemed to get the closest to because they are both animals. And honestly, I really like their relationship where Chopper was put into this big brother role, something he's never had to do before in the crew. Besides that though, her and Sanji also had a moment where they both reflected on Pedro's sacrifice. And even with Jinbei, she has a relationship with him where she looks up to him as the most experienced member of the crew. Honestly, out of all the straw hats that went to Whole Cake Island, I think her relationship with Luffy might be the weakest. The two of them really didn't have a ton of screen time together. And I would argue that's one thing that really needed more development. I think they just needed a few more interactions and more meaningful moments instead of just her biting Luffy for eating carrots. That being said though, in Whole Cake Island, she still got a lot of interactions with different crew members and beyond that, a lot of moments to shine. Not only with her big defining moment of strength in Su Long form where she really helped out the crew, but she also had a bunch of little fights where she worked together with other straw hats to like take down Brulee and escape the seducing woods. And most importantly, she actually got development for her character arc, which involved Pedro's sacrifice. Because as we found out in Zoe, Pedro was the person that she always looked up to her mentor and in Whole Cake Island she ended up losing him which created some nuance for her character where she had to deal with this pain and it also set up her character to grow even more to get even stronger to realize the dangers of the world and to inherit Pedro's will. So overall as a character and a potential straw hat I think Carrot's development in Whole Cake Island was a really strong start which is why I think you saw so many people that were pushing for her to be a straw hat that weren't even furries but the problem is her development was definitely not complete complete and she needed more time. And that is something we just did not get in Wano. For the entirety of the arc, she was just a background character, pretty much a YouTube reaction channel, just making reactions in the background. The only moment people remember about Carrot in Wano was a moment where she got smacked up by Peril Sparrow. So as a result of that, when you look at Carrot's overall character arc, she still just feels like a side character. Like, can you really argue that at the end of the day, Carrot got more development than even someone like Pedro or Rebecca? And even more so when you you compare her to someone like Momonosuke, her development is nowhere close to his. And that's the difference currently with her and the rest of the Straw Hats who have all gotten either an entire arc dedicated to them or multiple arcs that shows their backstory, growing their dream and giving them defining moments. And while Carrot has gotten some of that, it's nowhere near the same level and her story arc feels incomplete. So even if by the next chapter, Carrot ends up joining, which I would love for her character because it means that she could get more development, I think at least we can all agree that it 
it was a weird ass choice to just completely ignore developing her character for the entirety of Wano. And as a counter argument, I've seen some people bring up the fact that some of the other Straw Hats like Usopp also didn't get much screen time in Wano. But that's not really a fair comparison because the Straw Hats are already developed. They've already gotten their own arcs and have had an entire story to really flesh out their character. Carrot, on the other hand, still needed more time to develop to really grow her character. So as far as Carrot goes, that's the problem with the first option where even if she ends up joining, it was a really weird choice to just ignore her in Wano. But of course, there's also a second option, which is a Carrot fan's worst nightmare. Because as we last saw in the story, she was offered to become the new ruler of Zo, which already doesn't make any sense. Let me remind you guys that Carrot is 15 years old who has zero knowledge about the world. This is somebody that looked up to Chopper as a mentor, the guy that was fooled by the fake straw hats. So qualification wise, she practically has none besides the fact that she's pretty strong. And then as far as the Duke's reasoning for choosing her because of Pedro's will, that also doesn't make any sense. Because as we know, Pedro's entire mission and goal in the story so far was bringing forth the dawn of the new world and the liberation of Wano. That was the reason he fought so hard to keep the Dukes alive and believed so strongly in the straw hats that he sacrificed his life. If Carrot wanted to follow Pedro's will, it would make way more sense for her to join the Straw Hats and help them reach Laugh Tale and bring on the dawn of the world. Not becoming the new queen of the Minx where she has no idea what she's doing. So the Duke's decision here make no sense and even if Carrot ends up rejecting them, it still kind of shows that they didn't know Pedro at all. And then of course we have the worst case scenario where this is Carrot's actual fate and she does become the ruler, which not only would not make sense for her character, but would also go back to the issue of the development because not a single time in the story has there been a moment where you were like oh yeah carrot would make a great leader as a matter of fact it's really been the complete opposite where it's been continuously highlighted that she's very inexperienced and when you compare her to other characters that actually became leaders like momonosuke and vivi who actually showed leadership moments and growth carrot just does not stack up at all so her becoming the ruler would just feel very unearned and random and to top it all off if the straw has to just sail away without even acknowledging carrot I think the entire fandom might turn on Oda. But with that being said, let's move on to the tragedy of Yamato. And first and foremost, let's just address the fact that I definitely have a bias here. We've only seen Yamato for like three to four chapters, but for some reason, I'm completely on board with him joining the crew. But with that being said, let's get to the candidate that I think is most likely to join, and that is Yamato. I was someone that really wanted Yamato to join. I was on the train ever since she was introduced and just continue to push the narrative. As far as her character goes, of course, I liked her design. I was drawn to her power with Conker Saki and a mythical Zoan. I really liked the idea of what she could add to the crew in terms of power of the Straw Hats having five monsters on the crew. But even beyond that, I also had strong narrative reasons of why I wanted Yamato to join. It was not just because of the side boot. Yamato, in my opinion, has some great potential to develop a lot more. Like, let's not forget, this is Kaido's daughter. There was so much more here we could have explored given their past. There were even a bunch of little tidbits that were dropped that made their relationship interesting. There was her and Kaido's race being an Oni and Kaido's distrust of humans. Through Yamato, we could have fleshed out Kaido's backstory more so it wasn't just three pages, which was pretty much just a TLDR. We also never really explored her purpose to Kaido because for an entire life, he enslaved her and mistreated her and was ready for her to die and did not care. But then all of a sudden, the plan became to make her the Shogun of Wano. And in the end, we just never got any explanation about that or any exploration of that plot line. And then beyond that, there's also the top topic of her identity, which I know is a touchy subject. And while I know this is going to be a controversial take, I still think it makes no sense why Kaido called Yamato his son. Like even if you're going off the belief that Oda was making a statement here about trans rights, it's kind of a weird way to make a statement. Like look over here, even this evil literal demon that abused and enslaved his kid is pro trans rights, so you should be too. That's just a very weird way of making a statement even if that was the goal. Like there were many better ways to go about this this, like what he did with Kiku and also the bath scene that we got at the end of Wano. So just in general, the relationship of Kaido and Yamato was incredibly underdeveloped and just very confusing. But even beyond the heated debate of Yamato's gender, there was even a bigger thing, which 
which was her identifying as Odin. Which first off, let me be clear that I think it makes perfect sense why Yamato wanted to identify as Odin. For her entire life, she was trapped and enslaved and was not able to go anywhere. So through these struggles, it made perfect sense for her to find somebody to see as a glimmer of hope to idolize. And then even more so when she found his journal and read his story, which was pretty much everything she wanted. She wanted to explore and be free. So as far as Yamato idolizing Odin and wanting to be him makes perfect sense, the problem is she does not grow beyond that. In fact, she is so extreme in becoming Odin that despite wanting freedom, she's pretty much shackled by this Odin identity. So overall, Yamato as a character from what we saw in Onigashima was not developed enough despite having so many potential ways to do so. And personally, that was one of the biggest reasons I wanted Yamato to join. I wanted to see her get more screen time to develop and become a better character. But that is not what we got. Instead, after about 70 plus chapters of her relentlessly saying that she's gonna join Luffy and set sail to sea, she just changes her mind. Now, as I said earlier, obviously my feelings on this are gonna be biased because I liked Yamato and wanted her to join. But I will say I completely understand why people did not think she deserved to be a straw hat. Some people just didn't like her character, but the main point most people made was actually similar to Carrot, which is that Yamato was not developed enough. That being said though, I feel like no matter how you felt about Yamato joining, whether you wanted it or didn't want it or didn't care about it, I feel like we can almost all agree that her reasoning for staying behind was just bad. Because not only did she come to this conclusion off screen a Wano classic, but her reasoning in the end was once again just to follow in Odin's footsteps, showing that she has not grown at all. So for me, the worst part about Yamato not joining is actually her character just remaining stagnant and her character arc being a straight line. And because of that, when you start to look back at her character, it starts to feel pointless. Why give her all that screen time and continue to hammer home the idea that she's gonna join the Straw Hats, creating this expectation that she is gonna join and get more development in the future, only for her to just change her mind in the end and just remain as the same character she was introduced as. At the end of the day, she starts to feel like just an empty shell of side boob. She has great character design, but no personal development, and in the end was really just utilized as a plot device. And this issue gets even bigger because it connects to Wano as a whole. The ending for a lot of people felt rushed and there were a lot of different things that felt like they needed more time to develop. And when those are problems people have with the arc and then you have Yamato who took up a bunch of screen time but did not develop at all, she feels even more pointless. So as far as the tragedy of Yamato goes, it's not that she does not join the Straw Hats, it's the fact that she's cemented as a dead ass character. Now of course I've seen some defenses against this with the first one being that Yamato's real reasoning for staying behind in Wano is actually not what she told Momonosuke. Instead, in reality, she's really staying behind to be the protector of Wano. Because realistically, that does make way more sense. Her devil fruit is literally the guardian deity of Wano. There was also the recent moment with Green Bull where it seemed like Wano could not protect themselves without the Straw Hats. So if she ended up actually realizing that she wanted to stay behind in Wano and learn more about it and become his protector, that would actually make some sense. But the problem is, at the end of the day, that is just not what we saw happen in the story. If this is something you want to personally believe that makes the story make more sense and make it more logical, go for it. That's perfectly fine. But the reality is Yamato gave a different reason, which is also consistent with the story, which is that she is just Kazuki Odin and is going to do everything that he did. If you didn't believe that enough already, Oda even made sure to throw in one last joke just before we left Wano. Quick side note, another terrible thing about this is whether you like Yamato or hate Yamato or don't care about Yamato, I don't know a single person that actually likes the Odin stuff. But yeah, as far as the argument that Yamato lied to Momo, I don't think it's strong enough to use as a defense. Because at best, even if it does turn out to be true, it's still pretty unclear writing here. Yamato could have literally just said that she's staying behind to protect Wano and showed us an actual process of her growing as a character. And it would have made no difference to the end result and would have actually given us some character growth for Yamato. And in the worst case scenario, this is just hopium headcanon that Oda did not just make Yamato a one-dimensional copycat Odin. Besides that though, the other defense I've seen is that Yamato's gonna return later and she's gonna develop then. And while I absolutely believe that Yamato will return in the final saga and probably get a cover page story, that's just not enough time for 
for her to develop. First off, cover page stories pretty much are just info dumps and updates. You don't even get any dialogue in them, and even if Yamato develops in a cover page story, it's not gonna feel satisfying or fleshed out. As for her returning to the story later, I think she definitely will, but by then, there's also gonna be a bunch of other characters involved. I think already it's clear as ever that Oda feels like he's rushing the story to get to the end, the Straw Hats barely get any development post time skip, so there is no chance in hell that Yamato is gonna come back in the final saga with a hundred different characters and actually get like dedicated screen time to develop and grow. If anything, she's gonna return as a completely new character and the development is gonna happen off screen, a One Piece classic. And that right there is the tragedy of Yamato and Kara. It seemed like I have a lot to get off my chest, but my favorite thing in the story is the Straw Hats, so I'm really passionate about this stuff. But guys, let me know your thoughts on this as well. If you made it this far, you probably had a good time, so please drop a like for the YouTube algorithm. And I'm holding up a number between one to three. If you guess it wrong, you have to like, subscribe, and watch the next video. And the answer is three.